I hope, and present, present them, uh, themselves. One of them are from the central bank in Ukraine. And, you know, I, I have served as a deputy minister in the Ministry of Finance for eight years. So uh, I uh, have a naturally very deep respect for people from central banks. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, to, to see them. Please take the floor. The floor is yours. Uh, dear audience, and uh, also the Norwegian Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce, even if I heard that you think we are unorganized, which probably is true. <laughs> um, my name is uh, Jan Morten Rud. I'm, uh, I'm a partner in Nexia, which actually... <laughs> you have uh, fixed over slides now. <laughs> uh, which is a partner in Nexia, which actually is two companies. It's a management consulting company focused and specialized on IT and telecommunication. And uh, we also have a corporate finance company, which also is specialized on uh, IT and telecommunication. Today, we would like to talk about two products we are doing uh, in Ukraine together with uh, uh, four partners. And uh, the first product is uh, EID in Ukraine and how we are working to uh, try to uh, participate in uh, establishing that in, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, in this product, uh, we have two speakers. Uh, the first one is uh, Oleg from Integrity Vision, the CEO there. He will uh, talk about uh, uh, the process and also the position of the central bank. He could not come today because of uh, different... Uh, challenges. Uh, and then um, Hege will, from Bank ID Norway will uh, talk about a little about the possibilities and the solution. Okay, Ole. Hello to everyone. Uh, unfortunately, a representative from National Bank cannot be present here, so he sent me the information and uh, I share it with you. As uh, Roger mentioned in his presentation, we almost don't have money for food, but we still have internet and it grows. So I want to tell you about uh, the process of electronic identification in Ukraine. Uh, next slide, please. No? Oh, okay. Uh, the same of electronic identification is very popular in Ukraine. Implementation of electronic government services has developed very slowly previous years. For different reasons, uh, such as gaps in regulatory framework, different vision of security authorization mechanism, and uh, expectation of different structures to control all systems. All these points help uh, us to spend the time, but don't uh, implement user-friendly online government services. This year, situations look like changed. A, friend, uh, a working group founded by State Agency of Science, Innovation and Informatization of Ukraine had choose model of electronic identification. And next slide, please. Here it's uh, like it will be in future. The model describes identification of citizens regardless to their role, like private person, government employee, or business. There are several ways to identification. The model shows uh, like it will be. Uh, already exists a bank ID part, uh, which uh, we'll, focus, we'll focus a little bit later. Uh, digital signature, it's blue one. Uh, this is... Uh, a subsystem interaction with electronic identification systems through receiving certificate from certificate authority. Already more than 50 centers of certification existing in Ukraine. And electronic uh, identification scheme using electronic identity card. Cabinet of Ministers signed decision to launch electronic identity card in 2016, so next year. And the last one, which uh, in development, mobile ID, which been implemented by main telecom op operator, is the nearest future. Uh, all these ways for identification will be available on portals of government services. All certification will be distributed by uh, integration service of electronic identification, and, new, and there will be established newly company, which will 
on the Minister of Justice. Next slide, please. Um, yeah. Now short information about how it's uh, done uh, this year. Our government development strategy banks fuse customers' needs and propose different pilot projects around the bank ID. Uh, most successful was private bank and Oshad bank in this way. Their solution based on internet banking authorization and identity customer through their channels. Both of them use their self-development solution proposed to the government. Their solutions, uh, as uh, they propose their solution ex as uh, Bank ID Hub. Uh, the main risk in exploring commercial solution to a government level is the different aims and what and how the solutions should support the interest of the citizens and the customers from Ukraine. And uh, I think that this is... Next slide, please. Yep. Uh, the understanding this risk, the state agency and the cabinet of ministers ask National Bank of Ukraine as regulatory of financial market to develop Bank ID Hub as a platform which user customers um, uh, customers' data from the bank to identify individuals, companies and official entities that wants to get information from the different state regions. National Bank of Ukraine as regulatory can easily implement methodology of electronic ID and from their reason choose the crypto requirement because this question is quite conflicting in Ukraine. Based on this approach, I think that a National Bank of Ukraine could benefit from a partner which can deliver experience of implementation such project. Norwegian Bank ID has successfully implemented in Norway and we are therefore working in a partnership with them to find a solution that fits the requirement of National Bank in Ukraine. In uh, this case I describe the situation in Ukraine and I give my speech uh, to the Hege from Bank ID Norway and she share with us their vision. Well, I'm walking a bit, so I have to have this. And of course, it's more than uh, 130 banks where we can use the bank ID. Uh, and we use it about two times a week, all of us. And it's quite useful. We don't need to go to the bank uh, anymore. So uh, let's have a quick uh, look at the history of bank ID. It was established back in 2000. And the key success factor has been the cooperation uh, between the banks and NETS, the supplier, to have this uh, uh, success uh, of uh, an electronic ID to almost all Norwegians. We had some thinking there, but we landed on a central, um, um, central, uh, centrally stored solution because it it's the most uh, user-friendly thing, and it's also very secure. It's not cheap, but uh, it's also cost-effective. So are uh, Norwegians happy with Bank ID? Well, we ask them every year, and 80% score us as very user-friendly. So that's a good thing. And about security, well, it's sky high. People uh, really trust Bank ID, 97% say that it's very safe or safe. And of course, it is safe. It has never been tampered with. But the key success factor is the cooperation between the banks to have this rolled out uh, in society. And uh, there is a mutual recognition so if I have one bank ID, I can enter all the banks that I have a relation to. That's something special. We have a proposition, and that is that Ukraine can do that same leap to, uh, to have an e-government and, and, a, and a clean and um, uh, compliant um, business life. This is a Norwegian business school. They're happy. They've used this uh, bank ID um, 
identification and signing for a while now, of course it's easier for the student. We don't want to send any papers anymore. Especially students don't like that stuff. And of course it's better for the business. So Mona here says, well, it's better for all parts. So four of five students now enroll, they just uh, apply and sign the contract with bank ID. And this is uh, what we propose. What can Bank ID and Norway offer Ukraine? Well, we have this well-tested solution. We will uh, use it for years in Norway. And uh, also the public sector now has some experience and I think they're happy. More than 50% of the identification comes from Bank ID now. And um, of course, some private sector also use it. So um, this uh, recognized electronic ID scheme is complying with EU regulations, of course. Know your customer processes and the anti-laundering law. And we also have the framework for governance by the Norwegian banking sector, including EID policies, the rules, and regulations. So, we believe that Bank ID can be a tool for Ukraine to get in control of identities. And, uh, not the least, fight money laundering. And, of course, also be uh, of use in uh, private and uh, public services. This can happen in two ways, or more, one way or the other. Uh, of course, you can uh, implement the solution locally. In Ukraine, I have full control. Then you buy the solution and technology, and the licenses, and the rules and regulations. The other way is to have a bank ID as a service in a, trust, a trustworthy country like Norway. Anyways, there will be a joint venture between NETS and Bank in Norway because uh, NETS is our strategic partner and supplier. Then, uh, Jan Martin, to talk about something totally different. Yes, yes. Okay. new theme. Ah, it worked. Okay. Uh, we are very uh, excited about this partnership together with NETS and uh, Integrity Vision to uh, find a solution for providing these uh, products to uh, the Ukrainian market. We do our best to uh, uh, succeed with that. We have another project as well, which is a partnership with uh, Simula, Nexia, and also Integrity Vision. And uh, this... Uh, um project is uh, mobile network analytics this is a product we have worked with uh, which has been de 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 developed for um, seven years with very high skilled competence within the norwegian market both from simula and uh, later also uh, with the particip participation from uh, nexia and what we do is that uh, we put out equipment which are able to monitor and measure what kind of services the mobile operators is delivering to the market. We are not going into their systems because uh, that is not showing the true picture. We put out uh, uh, specialized measurement equipment which are producing measurements into the network from the outside and collects data. Uh, I skipped this one, it's just a picture of how this looks like. Uh, a better thing is to see actually how it works. And uh, could you give me the web pages now?
Yes, this is now live from uh, Kyiv in uh, Ukraine. We have uh, established the first uh, measurement system in uh, Kyiv. And now I hope that internet works. Internet always works. Okay, can you take it down and try again? Connected. So this is the nodes in Kyiv. Here we have. Um, here we now see the different mobile operators in um, Kyiv. And uh, it's uh, Utel, Live, Kyivstar, MTC, and LAN, that's the network connection that we use, the local area network. And uh, you also see immediately that uh, Kyivstar, Live, and Utel are uh, on 3G. Uh, Keystar has better uh, signal strength than the two other ones, and MT MTC is on edge. And can I take back the uh, previous picture? Yes. And we have a lot of measurements going on the whole time. We are storing all data so we can do analysis back in time. And this might not say you so much, but if you remember this picture, we will have a look at how the same picture look for the Norwegian mobile network. So could you have a look at that? This is our measurement system in uh, Norway. <laughs> uh, if you could take it back, you see that uh, here we have upgraded to LTE, but the major part is that the quality is different. So if we go back to the presentation, you can, uh, of course, go into each of these nodes, look at the different, uh, how this looks in different places, and you can compare all the mobile operators. And we have some insight already from the measurements in Kyiv, if we get the presentation back. This first graph shows uh, what percent of packet loss you have in the network. And uh, what you see is that the mobile operator that has upgraded to 3G, they have much less packet loss than uh, the mobile operator that has not upgraded to 3G, which is uh, MTS uh, in uh, Ukraine right now. And the other picture shows a little bit about the stability. If it's green, it is stable, it's of each of the nodes. And this is within Kyiv. And uh, if it's uh, this uh, purple color, it's really bad. Then you lose all the packages, so it's a big problem. OK, next slide. This is a picture that shows the major events in the network, in the mobile network. If it's a big bubble, it's very bad. If it's a small bubble, there is no problem or a small problem. And the first thing I have to say is that uh, this blue color is not Kyivstar. <laughs> uh, it's a mix of the colors. But uh, the blue color is actually MTS, and they have had some pretty large events in their network. And you actually see that Kyivstar, which is this color, has only quite small events. So they run their network quite good. Okay. So what are we going to use this for? Well, we are currently in negotiations with uh, the mobile operators to sell them this insight themselves so they can understand how are their services compared to the other operators in the market. We are also discussing with the regulator, which uh, looks into using this as a tool to see if the mobile operators is complying to what they have promised in their license agreements. Okay, thank you. <laughs>